Hi, good evening. So Okay, it looks like we'll have a, a quorum if we elevate Brian. Hey, Brian, how's it going? We have uh, myself, Kate, Biz, and Brian. I think I do expect um, Blythe to join, so maybe we'll just give her one more minute, and then I'll kick it off. All right, well, let's get started. Um, okay, I'd like to call to order this uh, special meeting uh, for Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. Um, let's move to uh, elevation of alternates. I'll make a motion to elevate Brian. Can I get a second? Second. Great. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And now we have, hey, Blythe, how's it going? Good. Good. Um, approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. All those in favor? Or excuse me, can I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks. All right. Okay. Um, we're going to try to move um, through some items quickly, and then um, we probably will step ahead, uh, skip ahead to the other business since we have um, some time constraints of commissioners. Um, but some of the quick ones that we can uh, move ahead with, um, we need to approve the minutes from the meetings held June 26th. July 17th and July 26th. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, July 26th isn't in there. I didn't have a chance to get those minutes done. Excuse me. Uh, only the June 26th and July 17th meeting. Motion to uh, approve. Thank you. Second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving through. Who was the, who, who made the motion on that? Sorry. I did. That was, that was Blythe. Oh, Blythe. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, correspondence, Jared, any, uh, any correspondence? I know we got some, uh, some yeah. letters that Mary Ellen provided that, um, relate to her, uh, her items, so maybe we save those for for that discussion. Yeah, that makes sense. They're all every, all the correspondence is related to that, so there's there's no other correspondence. Okay. Um, so moving on to public comment, I know we have um, several members of the public present. Uh, would anyone like? Uh, I guess before I open it up. Um, we do, we do limit public comment to, um, you know, around two minutes in the, uh, you know, in the interest of um, getting as much, uh, soliciting as much public comment as possible. So if anyone would like to, uh, to comment, now would be the time. Um, and then we also welcome uh, letters of any length that can be read. So if anybody, uh, anybody in the public want to, you know, I don't know, raise, raise their hand or not. Do I talk now or do I wait till the end? Uh, you, you will have the floor at the end. Um, I'll wait. Okay. 
So Mike, Jared, it probably makes sense since everyone here who's going to comment, I'm sure they're not commenting on adult yoga and whatever else. They're probably mm-hmm. all commenting on the personnel uh, bullet number nine. Okay. So it might make sense to have us begin that, go where we're going to go with it, then open it up for a public comment. And then once public comment is concluded, just move forward with however we're going to move forward because i feel like if everybody comments first and then we begin to discuss yeah then understood. people may want to go off of what we're going to say and it's going to become a, a pretty messy so it might make sense let's just go right into number nine we could always go back and do seven and eight and then at some point when we feel like we've hashed it out enough we can open it up to public a comment if you if you think that's uh acceptable well I feel like we should we should stick with since we already moved into it. If anybody besides Mary Ellen has public comment, I think we should have it now. Um and then we can move into it. Okay. So if any if any members want to Mike, I think I saw that Carolee had put her hand up. I don't know if she's still interested in speaking now. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll. Uh... Hi, I'm a little confused as to when we're going to speak and when we're not going to speak. So after you all decide, let us know. Yep, right now is great. Well, I'm I'm here to... Uh, speak in favor of the extra person for the uh, park and rec commission to to hire or or put in and schedule whatever they're doing and um, honestly I think Jared's doing a great job and I wish he'd get more support from the townspeople and the commission that's all. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else that would like to talk? Hey, uh, Miranda, I see your hand up. If you want to go. Yeah, I just uh, I just wanted to throw also my support in for the second full time position. I think it is necessary. Um, I think it would help with creating a more stable ASP situation. Um, and I fully support that. Uh, Jared is doing a great job, but I think um, he, uh, another full-time person would, would make a big difference. Um, and uh, that's, that's all. Thank you. Um, I see Lynn Flynn's hand up. Yes, hi. Then moving on to nine. Just holding boxes. It's a little choppy, the audio coming from you, Lynn. Um, I wasn't able to understand all of that. Um, let's maybe we we'll come back to Lynn if, if her audio gets better. Um, I, I'm just moving across. I see uh, Danielle with her hand up. If Danielle, you want to you want to speak. Uh, thanks. Um, yeah. So I guess I'm just a little confused about where in the process we are. So is this meeting tonight to actually vote on it? And, or is it just to vote about getting it on the calendar for the whole town to vote on it or so, at some point? Or where actually in the process is this? So we are, um, we have an agenda item tonight um, to discuss uh, the commission's approach to the recreation leader position. Um, based on that discussion, um, you know, how, how like a member of the public 
goes from there um, isn't really for me to say, but specific to this meeting tonight, um, the other business A agenda item will be um, to discuss the commission's approach to the uh, recreation leader position. Okay, so just so that I'm clear, so the point of tonight is so that we can make our thoughts known on like how it was handled previously. So this is not about, you know, getting it on the calendar for a vote or anything. Uh, no, no votes. Um, th th I think that's outside the scope of, of the Parks and Rec Commission, any, any votes. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure I can, uh, I can answer that. Um, Mike, I think what she's asking is, uh, based on the Board of Selectmen meeting that we had a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I, I, I'm interested in filing the petition to have the town meeting to call for a vote to have this second position funded. Mm -hmm. uh, it was sort of discussed by Jean that two things kind of had to happen. They were supposed to meet the Board of Selectmen. They said they would meet within a week. I don't think they've met yet. Um, to finalize and approve, I guess, the job description for the second full time and, and the actual like title of like, I don't know why the title isn't second full time position, but apparently there needs to be a different title. Um, and then the job description. And then I was told then that I was supposed to come to this meeting and um, get your support, the commission support that they are still supporting and want to move forward with having this second full-time position. Like we know that you guys are kind of putting a bandaid on it by trying to fill in what is really needed with the part-time. Um, but I guess the question that a lot of the public has is, is like ultimately what really is needed, we, I'm under the impression because it was in the original budget was that we really do need that second full-time position in order to continue growing making sure the ASP program is staffed and not having to cut anything or lose any programs. So I, I think that's where there's a lot of confusion. So. Sure. Okay. So the, um, to respond to that, the commission, the parks and rec commission has approved the um, rec recreation leader job description. It, it has been submitted to the board of selectmen, the board of selectmen are, discussing the job description at their August 29th meeting. Uh, tonight, under the other business uh, A item, we will, um, as a commission, discuss our, you know, I guess our, our support for that position specifically as of whether, whether it, um, you know, be this, this fiscal year or next, um, but that will be part of agenda item nine. So any uh, any further public comment, we'll keep moving through that. Hey, Mike. Yes, John. Uh, what took you so long to let me in? I mean, I've been waiting for about eight, 10 minutes. Uh, I don't run the uh Oh, who the does that? Is that uh, is that our friend Jared or am I throwing under the bus, Jared? I didn't see you there for eight minutes, John. Sorry, I it was there for eight minutes. minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, I missed. I wanted to say something on uh, the agenda item, so I just wanted to say, uh, okay, maybe I'll say something later on. Okay, got it, John. Um, yeah, we we started at seven o three. Um, maybe I should wait longer. My bad. Uh, Becky, I see your hand up. Hi, guys. Um, just wanted to uh, throw my support in my husband. Unfortunately, he couldn't uh, attend tonight. He had to take my son to Boy Scouts. But um, so we just wanted to throw our support into um, adding a second position to help out Jared. We think that he is doing a fantastic job. There's been nothing. There's been so much more for our children to do the summer and throughout the school year since he's been on. Um, and we just really want to uh, say thank you and to um, put in our support for another person to help him out. Thank you. Anybody else like to 
speak. Um, I saw my hand, um, Amaya. Hi, um, I just also wanted to throw in my support as well for the second Parks and Rec personnel uh, staff position. And we're, my family and I were all behind what Jared's been doing. And, you know, I think a lot of the families in town feel the same way. So that's, that's my input. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Heather Clausen. I just want to say our household is also in support of the second full-time uh, position. Uh, the uncertainty as a parent of what may or may not be happening going forward is very stressful yeah. um, so if I could say that you know for this uh this this year here. would be awesome thank you thank you okay um I don't see any other hands up so I'll give it um a few more beats and then um So Lynn, Lynn, did your hand go up again or is that just left over? Lynn, no, Lynn. it went up again. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, it sounds sounds good now. Oh good. I'm just in support of an additional person um full time for the park and rec. I am highly supportive of what Jared is doing and what he's doing for children, for adults, for seniors. And I want to support him in any way because we have sorely needed, especially after COVID, when everybody was isolated. And for seniors, they mainly, they can, they have a tendency of staying at home and isolating. And these programs that he has helped create or partnered with another entity, which is awesome. Um, it's, it's just, it's very gratifying when you take care of elderly people, especially the ones who you love. Um, but, uh, uh, for any elderly person, especially, um, it's very crucial for them to get involved and to enjoy it. And, and he's such a good rapport with the seniors and actually with kids too. So I am highly supportive of anything he does and, I, I agree. We need a full-time person, not a part-time person for these uh, two of his other positions because who's going to want to work part-time, put their heart and soul in it um, without any benefits? I think we need to be more competitive and more on the ball compared to other towns if we're going to get quality help. And Jared has. And I just, if he feels that we needed an additional person, I wholeheartedly agree with it because I, I think he's he's got the knowledge to know that that's what's needed. So thank you for listening. And I did submit today um, letters. I started to collect letters from people who feel the same way as I do. Some not as strong because they're not a, a, as aware of all the programs that Jared has done and what he has accomplished so far. Um, so I can get more letters, <laughs> that's no problem. But I, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't know if this was gonna amount to anything. Um, I really wanna work on the, the people running for office. I think we need to know who's next in line to see um, what their views on this are. So um, I'm going to continue to speak to people because a lot of them can't make this meeting. A lot of them, a few of them are not on social media and I'll, I'll continue to get letters and I'll submit them when necessary because uh, for me, Jared's programs have been a lifesaver and, and also employing the youth. Jared hired my granddaughter and it's a win-win situation because she has a lot to offer. She's got a lot of great credentials. And on the other hand, he, is, he has shown her so much um, about 
working with kids, even though she's got experience with it, um, she he's the only person he's gotten to weed for him. She will not weed on jobs with me. And Jared's able to do that. And I pay the same amount. So he's got, he's got, I don't, a rapport. He's got such a good rapport with everybody. Maybe not certain people, because there are a few people that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a independent basically, and I don't believe in spending money, but I feel kids are an investment and our seniors have served their time and we had to take care of them. So I, I'll wrap it up because um, I'm just going to keep going on my crusade of getting more um, affirmations about what Jared has done for all the people that have participated and, and to support him in any way we can and, and to support anybody in the park and rec position. So thank you for your ears. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think that concludes the public comment. And I think it's a good time. We'll, we'll come back to seven and eight, but let's skip ahead to um, number nine, a other business, um, Mary Ellen. Lynn, you're still uh, unmuted, just so you know. Oh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Brian. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so M Mary Ellen, um, why don't you take the floor? Um, I think pretty much it's all kind of been said. Um, I think that, you know, it's very clear that in the past, I guess, year that Jared's been here, I think it's only been a year or so, right, Jared? Maybe just a little bit over. Yeah. So um, the, the exponential growth that the park and rec department has experienced has been amazing. Um, you know, we really are now a town that has programs for our children, for our families, for our seniors. And it's, it's impressive. Like I have to say it was, it was a big letdown before, you know, I, I've lived in much bigger towns and this was just the standard. I kind of thought that every town had things like this. And then when I moved here and my kids were little and there was, there was nothing, it was just so disappointing. And then when COVID hit and the whole world just shut down, um, we realized what was missing. And then when we were able to come back and start these programs up, what a huge difference they made in our, in our kids. And, um, you know, I, I just, I see it. I see it when I'm out there, um, you know, at, at the soccer games with my kids and tennis and all these events, you see the parents talking to each other, the grandparents are there taking pictures and, and that's what Kent's supposed to be. You know, we're supposed to be a small, close knit social town that looks out for each other and helps each other. And this turned into this big, gigantic mess of this one doesn't like this one and this one doesn't like this one. But we're really forgetting that this is not this is about the kids. And it's really about what we need to do for our children to help them become normal, social human beings. And they lost that. They lost that in the pandemic. You know, I'm a public school teacher. This is my 24th year. I know and I see what happened and I still see what's happening because of COVID. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't didn't disappear. You know, you've got second and third graders who are having trouble reading and, and with language because they didn't get to see someone talk and teach them phonics and those letters. You know, I have, I have seventh graders last year who just wanted to be on the computer and didn't want to work with each other, even though they were right next to each other because they just haven't done it in so long. So I, I just think that it's so imperative. And I know, and I know how much time and energy goes into these programs because I've done it. That's part of my job as a teacher. I'll spend 25 hours planning an activity that's a half hour long. And I, and I know that that's what happens. I know that's what Jared's doing behind the scenes. You know, my kids went to that camp this summer. It was amazing. And they've done other camps and they already said, mom, can you sign me up for next summer? So, I mean, he's working hard. Everyone's working hard. I think Tom is phenomenal in the after school program. I don't think we're going to be able to hold him. 
I think that if, if a part-time position is not going to keep people in our town that we trust with our children and that are reliable and are hard workers, like it's, it's just, we don't live in that world. We, we lead, we need to be competitive. Like someone else said, we need to offer people benefits because then they become invested in our town and our children and our families. And I think that, you know, the commission was supporting this before May 31st. And I think that that whole thing happened, which was kind of a fiasco and even watching it a second time, it's still very unclear as to so many people were confused. Um, I do want to put this petition forth because I do think that we will get more than the 20 signatures necessary to um, get this position funded. I just need, I guess, your support or the board of selectmen needs to know that you're still supporting that second full-time position. Thank you. And um, so just to continue with, um, we mentioned letters. So there was uh, one, two, four, eight. so there are nine letters that are in the backup um, mm. that all say, so I'll just read the, it's a template letter that was submitted by nine people. So the the letter said, dear members of the Park and Recreation Commission, this letter is to ask for your commission to go forth and resubmit the full-time Park and Rec Commission position to the Board of Finance. I'm in favor of an additional full-time employee versus the, cur the current two part-time employees. And that was submitted by, um, and I apologize if I mispronounce um, any uh, first or last names, Mary Gowell, Callie Gowell, Will Gowell Jr., um, Maria, can't read it, Clemus, Robert Morton, Ann Starr, Tanya Horgan, Barbara Lynch, and Susan, can't read the last name. And then a member of our commission who can't be here tonight, uh, Abigail asked to read a letter at this agenda item, which says, fellow commissioners, apologies for my absence today. I ask that you please consider supporting Mary Ellen Epstein and seeking to petition the removal of a full-time park and rec creation position from the town budget. We, this commission, gave great thought to every item in our budget and agreed that a full-time position was needed. This budget was then approved by Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance. Suffice to say, many elected town officials have given this thought and passed our budget. The annual town budget vote in May was very close with a few members of the commission there to weigh in, or with few members of the commission there to weigh in. I believe it is worth another round and hope you'll support the petition. Sincerely, Abigail. Okay. Um, so I guess I'd like to ask Jared to um, uh, maybe address the the concerns about the uh, the after school program that um, seem to be the you know the the theme of um, the public comment and uh, you know what whether how, how you feel about the, um, the the program as it's as we're prepared to uh, to start it. Just the after school program? Um, as a starting point, yeah, if there are other things you wanted to address. So I, so what I what I hear um, and you know other commissioners can can weigh in is that uh, you know there's concern about the viability of the after school program um, run by a part-time position. So the the reason that we put the full-time position in the budget and wanted to aggregate those two positions that being after school and camp kent um was twofold one it was to give us stability amongst those positions and consistency for the kids and then the second was ideally that candidate would use whatever hours were remaining not dedicated to asp or camp to assist with other activities so basketball baseball movie nights whatever like a true rec leader would do like in the civil service title rec leader, that's what they would be doing help with the, the day-to-day -day running of the department so that it would free up time for the director to begin to focus on more high level um, responsibilities. So the, to say that we can't run ASP with a part-time person or we can't run camp with a seasonal person 
is it would that wouldn't be totally accurate. Will there be more turnover? A hundred percent. Are we going to keep people for more than a couple of years? No. Are we going to keep people heck beyond a year? Potentially even not. But I do believe that we are in a position to run ASP for this fiscal year, if that's the, the specific question that you want me to answer. Well, yeah, I guess that was that was my question, yes. Yeah. Um uh, can I ask a question or is it, is my time done? Um go ahead. So like say Tom leaves. So he gets a full-time position somewhere else. Then I'm assuming, Jared, that that falls on you then to have to cover ASP. And then how do you do the rest of your job? It wouldn't fall on me because okay. we've hired, we have several part-time people still on staff, a number of whom have expressed interest in, in and are capable of running the after-school program. Okay. Any other uh, any other commissioners have any have any thoughts or want to ask Jared any? Um, I would any just okay. yeah, I would just ask is is there a, is there a, an inability to continue the type of growth model that you want to continue by not having someone full time so you can focus on some of those higher level things or so that so here's here's what I think build new programming. Sorry, Brian. Um, here's what I think. And I've said this. I said this when Mary Ellen and I met and I've said it with a whole bunch of other people. Um, I really appreciate what everybody's trying to do with respect to getting the second full timer in the budget for this current fiscal year. But I don't believe that it's the time to do it. Um, and the reason I say that is because we are twofold. One is because we've already basically started moving forward and we're doing just fine. But two, and this is the most important part, is that we're going to alienate a significant portion of the the, the residents for something that we can wait. We're going to be submitting the budget three months from now, and we're going to be putting in this full-time position again. And I think all of this this energy that everyone's bringing and what Mary Ellen's doing, that would be better directed when we submit our budget and basically go back for round two. Because I think if we go back and we say to everybody who came to that meeting and voted, by the way, we don't think that vote was fair. We're going to come out. We're going to get it changed. We're going to go right back to where we were before this, which is an all out war. And you, I said this to Mike today, we had a meeting before the meeting. You can't ask a director to come in, whether it be me, Miranda, um, anybody in the future to come in and to continue to this knockdown dropout fight with people. And I think we have a plan to move forward. We're good to move forward. Things are 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 in a good way. Are they are we going to move and grow as quickly as we would have with the second full timer to answer your question, Brian? Of course not. We won't, but we'll still be able to keep the pace that we kept this year. And ideally, we won't have to spend so much time with the the knocking heads with people, butting heads with people. And that alone is a huge hindrance to getting work done. And if we're if we don't have to do that for this year and we could go back to the budget request for 2025 and get this accomplished without creating a fight this year, I think it's a no brainer. Um, I'm not articulating myself well, so if you have any further questions, Brian or anybody else, you know, let me know, but, um, that's kind of my thought. I don't know if it even made any sense, but, um, that's, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think part of the reason why this meeting is happening is because people are essentially saying to us, they, they, they want to take the fight to, you know, it's not, it's not something like you and I talked briefly the other day. It's one of those things where. I think we're the ones that have proposed it. We're the ones that understand what needs to happen. You you understand more than anybody what's what's important and the impact that this is going to have day to day, week to week, hour to hour. Um, 
you understand the growth model and and how you can continue to grow both the senior program, uh, you know, the youth programming and and uh, and sort of the, the infrastructure of park and, and the parks and, and the recreation program. But I think the public is saying there's enough people generating enough sort of um, that are bringing it to the attention of people who do make those decisions. So I think part of this is they want to sort of take it off of our shoulders. And, and what I'm hearing, unless I'm wrong, what I'm hearing is, is that this is important to them and is very, very important to our kids. And, and it's a fight worth fighting outside of the actual day-to-day -day park and rec department responsibilities. Um, and as a, as a parent of a seven-year-old, a second grader, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's a significant impact to, uh, and as someone who coaches these kids, there's a significant impact to, to what we're doing. Uh, and I think it's, it's worth at least allowing people to voice their concerns, frustrations, and, uh, and be able to voice themselves in a forum that is responsible, thoughtful, um, and it may get us what we want, even if it's three months earlier, um, you know, I think it's, it might, it might be worth allowing people to do that on our behalf. Jared, can you check the waiting room? I know people are texting me. They got kicked out. Sorry. Just um, one person Ryan, there, Lennon. I think what you said is true. I mean, I understand that you guys have been dealing with some members of the public who have been relentless and are bullies and are vindictive. And I am so sorry that you have to do this and it should never come to this. This is the Kenton Park Rec Park and Rec Department. You know, this is supposed to be, you know, good for our families and our kids. Um, I'm not asking you to fight. I'm telling you that there are a lot of people in this community that, and this was my own ignorance. I did not know that this meeting was even happening on May 31st. A vast majority of us didn't know. I also didn't know that someone could just get up and say, hey, I want this gone, and that could happen. And and that's my own ignorance in politics. I am not into politics. I'm I'm starting to learn that I have to be. Um, but it was very clear in that meeting, and there were a lot of people who were confused by what happened. They were they were not happy with what happened. And if I'm not mistaken, it was only by like four people that then that was struck out of the budget. One or two of which I know for a fact did not even understand the question and only voted because they didn't know what else to do. Um, and then when the second vote came around and people were saying, well, I don't want to vote for the budget then because it didn't pass, that was even more confusing. So people got up and asked, how can we have another town meeting where this is clear? We understand what's happening. And they threw out a petition has to happen. I am just trying to get the petition to the people who have told me they want this program. And the only way that's going to happen is if you guys support us moving forward in the second position and the board of selectmen do their job that they said they were going to do and just accept the job description as it is. If we don't get the signatures, then this is over. But if we get the signatures, which I believe we will, then it goes back to the town. People know that this vote would happen. They know this meeting would happen. And there's a greater stakeholder share. This was a Wednesday night at seven o'clock. I was putting my kids to bed. My husband was at a work meeting. No, we didn't know this meeting was happening. All of a sudden I get all these text messages. Oh my God, there's a vote. Oh, this is happening now. People were trying to get down there to vote, but then they couldn't get in the meeting because they were five minutes late. So it was just a whole cluster of nonsense for that May 31st meeting. And I think that it wasn't a gigantic majority that we this item was taken out of the budget. And I think that there are a lot more people who, if they were there, this wouldn't even have been an issue. And I, and I hate that people keep saying this is a fight and I'm on your side and this side. This isn't how it should be. This is the right thing to do for our kids in our town. And we need the vast majority of stakeholders to understand that if we can have another meeting and talk about this and then vote, then that's how it is. But this all happened too quickly and there were too many people who were confused. And I guarantee you, if you go back and you watch that Zoom meeting, it was, it was insane. It was insanity. 
of how many people look at their faces, how confused people were. So we're asking you as a commission, because you're the ones that are there to represent what we think is great for the town. We're asking you to just support the need for the second full-time position, which, I mean, let's get real. Part-time people are great. Two part-time versus one full-time. It's kind of not that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things, but it will allow us to grow faster and better and just do what we need to do. So I just think by allowing me to then put the petition forward and then seeing if the town really wants this, then that's where we need to go with this. I, I hope that makes sense. I think I was trying to kind of jump on what you said, Brian. So I hope that helps. Okay, so to to kind of move this forward, um, you know, I, I see this going one of two ways. Some Someone makes a motion saying that for the Parks and Rec Commission to um, be prepared to support the recreation leader position for the current fiscal year, um, or alternatively, someone could make a motion to um, state that the Parks and Rec Commission plan to support the recreation leader position for the uh, following upcoming fiscal year. So I guess I now turn to see if um, any members of the commission would like to propose a motion. This is con this is tough because with Jared Jared's concerns are, you know, we don't. I mean, to be, uh, it is my understanding, commissioners, that we all support a second full time position. That is we've we voted on it already we put it into the budget so we all support it um but we i don't want to make i don't i certainly don't want to make matters worse um so i i don't know what the obvious i mean I, you got mary that was you're just it, you articulated everything so well and when um we, I just want to do the right thing that'll push us forward to accomplish what we all wanted to accomplish in the first place, was, which, which was to have a second full-time position. So I don't know. What do you think, Blake? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I, I keep circling back around to, it's, it's great that Jared feels we could be okay for a while, I keep thinking back to those um, many meetings when we were basically running through ASP staff and directors like, I, I don't even pick your analogy, but um, it, it was difficult. It was, um, you know, I'm, it's it's great to know that there are people who are out there, but every, um, every resignation, every new hire required um, a lot of time, some, sometimes several weeks where uh, we were trying to kind of patch things up between directors, um, figure out how to staff that. I particularly do not want to go backwards in that regard, which is why um, I initially supported the um, the idea of a second full timer. And I don't find myself having changed my my feeling. I feel um, to some degree that just saying, okay, let's try to get it in here for the next budget season, um, which could be, I mean, when is that? That's that's next, what, June? When is the next budget cycle? Right, it was, it was start next, uh, next July. It's <clears throat> a long time away. Um, my support for the initial proposal hasn't wavered. And another, and another thing is when we made, when we, made the plan for the second full time we made it with fiscal considerations very much in mind and that i mean we kept taking into consideration the amount of the amount of money we were spending on part time workers and trying to consolidate the funds so it was a fiscal decision as in a, you know in addition to a logistical one so just you know for the community to know that Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I 
<laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, so John and uh, Biz, I don't know if uh, you have anything to add. Yeah. I, 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 oh, go, go ahead, ahead, John. Oh, go you first. Go. I was going to say, I'm also like feeling similar to Kate about like, what is the right way to go? I'm also sort of comparing it to like, I'm on a board for the, or a subcommittee on the board of ed. And, you know, we were talking a lot about, you know, our community connections and just like making the public aware of what we're doing and, you know, sort of how to prepare for next budget season so that we can, you know, so we don't have such a battle. So, you know, sort of thinking about what another committee is doing is sort of just trying to think ahead to the next budget season and how we can communicate everything we need to to the community to get our support. Um, but also I'm torn because I have kids who participate in Park and Rec and, and I'm a part of the school and I see all the great things that Jared does. So I, I don't know how I feel. I'm, I'm very torn. John, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say, Jared's right. I mean, if it, we're better off waiting, I know you, a lot of parents wouldn't, you know, would object to that. But the fact is that, you know, you're dealing with finances and the but and the selectmen, and um, there's so many battles going on in that office and around that office. So that I think, you know, we're better to wait before we go forward. I really do. Jared was right. There's nothing worse than a divisive small town. And I think um, there is there is consideration to be given to um, to to the idea that perhaps um, having more time to educate the public about what this really means to put some information together that I think somebody mentioned in that May 31st meeting about what is, tell me everything the park and rec is doing. Um, I'm not sure that there are a lot of people in town who really know everything that happens beyond ASP and perhaps camp. Um, so I could see waiting for this cycle, not using the petition, which maybe feels a little bit more um, urgent and possibly divisive, especially if we're not concerned that ASP will be will be affected. I, I don't know. I, I just have to trust Jared on that one. Um, and I do. Um, but I don't know. Now I'm confused. <laughs> Crap. All right. Why, let's just re review. If we, if we go forward with this fiscal year, that means we're going to force a vote on the set on the position prior uh, we're going to force it. We're going to force another vote, correct? Before the regular budget season. We're going to force a town meeting mm -hmm. where questions can be asked and answered. And then if someone at the meeting wants to have a vote, then we would. This is ultimately to just get a town meeting to discuss this because like um, I think Blythe just said, I, I think you're right, Blythe. I think a lot of people didn't realize how much Park and Rec does until after May 31st. And now I think people realize how much Park and Rec is doing for this town. So I honestly and truly feel, and I already have over 20 letters between me and Lynn. We have already over the 20. Darlene said we would need 20 signatures. We have well over that. That would there's enough people in this town that want to have another town meeting and yes, vote about this. So we already have the numbers. Well, I mean, it is our, it's our job to respond to the community. That's our job. So, I mean, we're hearing from the community. So I think I'm, I think Jared, I, um, I want to defer to your wisdom on this one, but the community really seems to want us to go to push forward on this. So Jared. 
And just, just real quick, I, I do see a couple of people with their hands up, but the public comment is closed. Um, so we won't be able to, to hear from any members of the public for the rest of the meeting. Uh. <laughs> just to, to respond to Kate, um, at the end of the day, and I, I've also said this from the beginning, and this this is, I am not a resident in the town of Kent. Um, and I fully acknowledge that I am simply an employee here. And that these things, things of this matter, and this is the reason, like, I spoke to Mary Ellen very briefly about this. And I said, listen, I can't really talk to you anymore. It wouldn't be, it's not professional of me. This needs to be, to be cheesy for the people, by the people, of the people. So, like I said, I've said my part. I think this is going to be divisive. And I think we are not, we are, we're, we're trying to change that culture. And this is not the way to do that. However, I respect what you said, Kate, which is that this is, once again, it, this is a, a residence-driven residence, residence driven action. And the commission, you guys are all residents, and I am not. And ultimately, it's it's your decision to make. I just, I just had to say my part. And like I said, I said it to Mike earlier, you're asking a lot of a director, whether it be me or someone in the future, to continue to deal with these situations. Um, and I I think we can wait eight months or whatever it ends up being. By the time this even was settled, it would be October. We'd be a third of the way through the fiscal year. I believe that it you can wait. And I think that that's in the best interest of the future of the department because it says to the people who don't agree with us, hey, they're actually listening. Hey, they are compromising. And I think that that's something we sorely lack in this country on a whole, certainly in the town of Kent, so far as I've noticed. And I think a lot of people would agree there's a lot of butting heads and we can be that voice of like, hey, let's find a way to get through this together. If ultimately you guys don't believe that's the best, I totally respect that. But I felt that it needed to be said because more so than anyone, I'm the one who had to deal with that for the past year and a half. And it practically broke me. And it's just that, something yeah. that you need to keep in mind. Like I said, not only for me, whoever is sitting in this seat, how hard that is. So okay. I, I'm gonna, that's all I'm going to say, because I want this to be what you guys do. I'm really I'm I just wanted to say that part because I think it's important that the professional who leads the department, um, that that their perspective is also just factored in to what you guys, the residents determine is the best course of action. I'm so sorry to put you guys all in this position because I, I understand. I, I really, truly do understand. And I, I'm sorry, Kate, too. I, I understand that the pickle you're in. But, you know, being in public education, dealing with budgets, dealing with with all of these kinds of things like, you know, it, it's never going to be easier to put it in a budget next year because things always get more expensive and things always get bigger and better and harder to deal with. And there's always money that needs to go somewhere else. So, you know, I don't necessarily think that people are going to look at it and say, oh, yeah, they're compromising. Yay, team. I think they're going to say, oh, yeah, they don't need that much money. And next year, they'll need even less because the people who are striking these things out of the budget, they just want to keep striking things out of the budget that doesn't suit them or their family. But a longer timeline does not preclude um, the important support that um, that you've been garnering from the town, Mary Ellen, and, and thank you so much to you and, and those of you who support Jared. We certainly do. He's He's been amazing. Um, we're very, very proud of what we've been able to accomplish as a commission. Um, I, I do feel that, um, you know, maybe there is there, the, the extra time gives us the opportunity to um, actually strengthen our position in support of um, this stance Maybe it gives us the time to educate the public a little bit more about what it is that we do, why the position is truly needed, um, and in a way that acknowledges that there are a lot of people who may have been confused, ill-informed, um, or otherwise um, unable to really process what was going on on that day. And um, at, when the time comes, it doesn't preclude a, a town meeting where maybe there's a petition at that point of support um, and um, more voices 
and being able to um, to respond in an informed manner to why it is um, that we are looking for, uh, to add this position, regardless of, I mean, I, I don't think we can worry about trying to squeeze it in on this year's budget versus next. I, I think um, we need to think maybe in a broader sense of what makes sense for, um, for our town, certainly what makes sense for the comfort and the working environment for our director who's in it um, yeah. 24 seven. And um, the opportunity that I think we could take to um, kind of trumpet the things that we've done and show the pride that we have and um, get more people in the town um, to be aware of and supportive of our efforts. Well said. I think that the, another big job of this commission is to support Jared. And we've got to support. Okay, so <clears throat> I guess I'll look one for- last, One last advice. word, one last word if I can. Mm -hmm. So on the Board of Education, we went through almost nine months of going back and forth with the Board of Finance the board of selectmen and so forth and so on. And we compromised and it just takes forever. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna have happen in three months. It took us nine months to get to where we are. And we finally get that, that passed. So that was fantastic. So now we can protect the children in that school system, but it's, you, you have to realize it takes time. And I think we, we should just take the time out so that we can just gather everything together and have everything to, so we can, so you guys can propose it and bring it forward. So just be prepared that you're gonna get no, no, no a few times, so. John, you wanna make a motion? Uh, I can't, I um, I, I think we should wait. Um, I Well, I'll make that motion. I mean, first of all, is there's another motion on the, did Kate say something? We don't have a motion, no. Okay, so I'll say that we postpone until at, at a better date, that everybody can come together and propose this uh, project that you want to do for the uh, the second person. So, so specifically for the for the following fiscal year, or no no sooner than the following fiscal year. Yeah, I mean it, it takes forever, guys. I mean, you have to realize that. So, is there a second? Just a little, just to comment on that though, John, part of the reason why things happened the way they did was because of a lack of understanding of the situation. So I yes, things do take time, but in this particular circumstance, I don't know that that was, that was the issue. I'm gonna stop talking because we've, this meeting's gone on too long, I'm sorry. I'll second. Uh, further discussion? Okay, um, so all those in favor of supporting the rec leader position starting next fiscal cycle, um, raise their hands or say aye. That's myself and John, are you, I assume, in support of your own motion? Um, I, I wish I could put it in a different way so that I, I just think that we should start uh, in the next, next fiscal year. Um, yeah, um, to move things forward, will we, uh, you know, I uh, it's tough. I mean, because like I know how they are in the Board of Finance and the Selectman's Office. It's just tough. Um, uh, I'll I'll say okay. I'll, I'll go with it. Let's go. Okay. All those opposed. One. Raise your hand or. Wait. Yeah. I'm confused. What I'm voting so for. The, uh, so the motion from John was to was for the commission to support this position no sooner than next fiscal year. So it, it would not be in support of the position for this current year. Well, no, my 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 uh, proposition was the fact is that we would come together and then present it to the Board of Education, uh, to the uh, 
uh, selectmen. That's what, what, I, what I proposed. Um, well, so the, the job description has been submitted to the uh, Board of Selectmen, John, um, which they are reviewing at their, so, so we did vote on the job description. It passed in our June meeting. It was submitted to the Board of Selectmen this month. So they are um, they are discussing it at their next meeting. Um, so I, I must have misunderstood your uh, your motion. Um, so so essentially we're we're looking for one of two motions. One saying we're ready to support this position immediately if necessary. The other is no sooner than next fiscal year, which begins next July with the planning this coming January. So to make it easy, I think, John, you should just rescind your motion, whatever yeah, yeah. the motion was. Right. Motion, motion, let's motion. just do, we should just do one motion and that motion is to- well, Hold on, someone's gotta make the motion though. All right, but if I could just articulate it so sure. someone can make yeah. that motion, cause I can't okay. make the motion. The motion should be to make it simple because this was brought to us by Mary Ellen. The motion should be to make a motion to um, immediately request that the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen um, move to a, a town meeting to support the second full-time leader position or something along the lines of that. And then either that motion passes or it fails. Well, so, right, yeah, okay. So Jared, the motion would be that we are ready to support the rec leader position immediately if necessary. Perfect. So someone's just got to make that. So if someone wants to make that motion. Do you want me to rescind my motion first? Uh, if it hasn't already been rescinded, yes. Yes, I'll do that. Okay. Um, and so we're looking for a motion. I make the motion to uh, allow the community members to move forward and obtain the signatures necessary to bring it to a board of selectmen, which then in turn would bring it to a uh, a town meeting. The okay, motion so, can't be worded like that. So I, Brian, that, that comes from directly from Darlene, not me. So um it's so, gotta be how Mike said it. Mike, why don't you just make the motion? Honestly, you can't you can make motions, you know. Um so I mean I appreciate that Brian was willing to, and <laughs> I'm not trying to put words in Brian's yeah, sorry, mouth, Brian. Yeah, sorry, Brian. Sorry. If Brian, if um the 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 gist of what it would be that your mo motion that the board motion that the Parks and Rec Commission um, is prepared to support the rec leader uh, position for this current fiscal year. I make the motion that the Park and Rec Commission um, you can say so move. So, <laughs> so move to support uh, the recreation director position in leader. this fiscal year. Leader, leader, position. <laughs> leader position in this year. Thank you. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, uh, please raise your hand if on video or say aye clearly. All those opposed? John for one. Mike one. Biz, are you abstaining or and biz of abstaining? Um, so we do not have a a majority, so the motion does not pass. I don't have anything further to add. Um, I know that was very difficult. And I think um, I thank everyone for participating. Uh, so we're moving on to seven programs and events, summer wrap up, Jared. You can ignore that, Kate. I didn't mean to click ask to unmute. Um, okay, summer wrap up. So we had a lot of great things going on this summer, Camp Kent. Had 60 kids uh, plus signed up. We did uh, six weeks of the of the camp, and uh, we took a trip each week to Quasi, Connecticut Science Center, a bunch of other Connecticut and New York uh, locations. 
It's really successful, a lot of positive feedback, some of which you heard here today. And, um, you know, obviously I just want to give a shout out to Club Getaway um, because they were phenomenal to work with once again. And I, I just think we should, you know, count ourselves very lucky that um, we have such a great place to call home for our summer camp. Not many towns, not many municipalities um, are that fortunate. So they deserve a big shout out and um, just kudos to Wendy and um, everyone else that we worked with, um, you know, for making it possible. Uh, we also had Slam and Jamma and we did a, a baseball camp this year. First time doing that. Slam and Jamma, we had between the two sessions over 35 different kids. Um, both were successful. We may just drop down to one month, one week of camp next year. Um, instead of splitting it into two, it would be more financially lucrative for the, the Slam and Jamma company. But otherwise, it was super successful. Baseball camp was a success as well. We had 20 kids. It was a half day camp. Um, and, uh, every day we had almost a full turnout. So it was, um, really strong, uh, really strong program. And, um, you know, I think it definitely gives us something to work off of in the future, you know, in terms of adding more than just a day, summer day camp, you know, we have slam and jamma, but what about baseball? What about soccer? All these other things that hopefully we can add on to, uh, moving forward. Um, and then lastly, the other night we did a summer movie night in conjunction with the town of Warren and with, uh, the Kent. Memorial Library. Uh, it was a pretty light turnout. Wasn't super thrilled about that, but we got a lot of positive feedback from the people who were there who definitely, um, you know, said that they enjoyed themselves and they definitely want to see more events like that. So I think it's one of those things where um, it's going to take a little time to build up. And also, you know, as with the Halloween movie night, you know, go back to the drawing board. What could we do differently? What could we improve upon? Um, but, you know, um, otherwise a success. So that really was our summer, and um, I think it was a was a, a really strong, strong summer, you know, um, through and through. So, um, next item. Yeah, uh, I heard um, from Abigail that it got uh, rave reviews. So, um, nice job, Jared. What was that? I heard I heard from Abigail that um, you know Camp Kent got rave reviews. So, um, from parents she spoke with. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it really went well. And kudos to Tom and all the staff as well. Um, you know, they did it. They did a great job. Um, tennis in the parks. Next program um, that we want to add for the fall. A few people already signed up for it because I accidentally opened registration a couple days early, but doesn't really matter because we don't really control the price for that. That's controlled by the USTA. So it's going to be a six week program. Um a USTA certified instructor named Mike Perkins will run it. I'm going to help him. Um, and it will be $66 a person, a cap of 16 kids. Otherwise it gets too crazy. Tennis balls flying everywhere. Kids right. So eight, eight per, um, eight per session. So there's yes, two session. Yeah. There's two, two sessions eight. each an hour. And uh, yeah, four, four children per court. Um, so this will be the, now the third tennis in the park session and that kind of the fourth tennis camp overall. So um, I'm, I'm pumped and uh, the USDA is a great partner because they give um, they give all the kids uh, rackets, which is alone worth the, um, you know, the 66. Uh, the, what's the amount again, Jared? $66. $66. Um, and they're also providing us balls, which um, are not inexpensive. So that's that's a big help. Um, so, uh, I'll make, so do we need a motion Jared to, uh, yeah, we need a motion just cause okay. we raised the price from last year. So, sure. so, um, I'd like to make a motion to run, um, tennis in the parks at Kent common park, uh, eight week program at the cost of, I'm sorry, is it six or eight weeks, Jared? Six weeks. Excuse me. Six week program at the cost of $66 per child. Um, so does anyone like to second this program? I'll second it. Thanks, John. Uh, any discussion? Yeah. Do you need to, uh, have the, um, uh, uh, the tennis court sprayed down, washed up, uh, spray washed? I think they're looking good, Jared. You've been over there, um, yeah, Ed did, Ed did some uh, a light treatment to it, and that helped. We're going to still need that professional washing, but that helped a little bit. So, um, you know, still on the, the docket. Like I said, that's just a, 
that's going to be an expensive um just to wash it alone is going to be over two grand probably so um you know got to get quotes and all that and because ed did some treatment to it it hasn't been tops on the priority list so but it's it's fine right now okay all those in favor aye 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 awesome all right should be a good one okay adult yoga Okay, so um, I've been I had several meetings with Dawn Delpha, who runs yoga for New Milford, and um, she came highly recommended by New Milford Parks and Rec. She'd like to um, run a program with us, and um, basically it would be a six week program on Thursdays beginning in October, um, and it would cost ninety dollars a person, and would also have a cap of sixteen people, and this would be for adults eighteen and older. So, um, you know, that's something great. You know, we, as Mike, Mike and I were talking earlier, and one of the areas that we need to continue to improve upon is our offerings for people 18 and older for adults. So I think this would be a great program to get going. And as I said, Dawn came highly recommended um, personally by the uh, recreation professional in the town of New Milford, but also by a few residents who go down there for yoga and obviously would rather stay up here and do it. So her, all of her credentials are in the backup if you need to see that. Um, but basically I would like, and she has her own insurance and everything else. She's a sole proprietor. So basically I'd like to um, contract with Dawn Delpha to run a six week yoga program at a cost of $90 per person, um, 16 people max, which doesn't really need to be in the motion, but yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so moved. Second. Any other discussion? Any questions for Jared? This is going to be held at the community house. Yeah, I already checked with um, Joyce. It's all free. And basically, so long as this is successful, Dawn wants to do this as a recurring program similar to Tai Chi. So I basically let Dawn know. I let, basically let Joyce know we'd be using the community house indefinitely. And should the program be canceled or not run or need a time change, um, you know, we would coordinate with Joyce accordingly. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Sounds good. Motion carries. Adult yoga. Adult yoga. Uh, swim programs. All right. Swim. Um, not ready for a vote or anything just yet, but I wanted to fill you guys in. That basically I've been in talks with John from the Kent School, who's their athletic director, and Mo Van Mofert, who ran swim lessons last year. And we basically have a framework more or less ready to go for um, after Columbus Day. And that's going to be, um, we're going to do Wednesdays for adult swimming. So in the morning, we'll have an open pool for adults 18 and over for lap swimming and, you know, socializing, whatever else, uh, you know, aqua workouts um then that would be roughly from 6 30 to about 8 in the morning and then from about 8 30 to about 10 we would be doing mo would be leading a senior aerobics and kind of senior pool time and then on saturdays we would go do our swim lessons again and the goal is to do a fall session then break for between uh, sorry then break for then break then then sorry, then break for between Thanksgiving and New Year's and then do a winter session and then a spring session as well. So basically we'd just be renewing that program for three seasons. Um, we just waiting basically to kind of iron out the details of the Kent school regarding how much they're going to charge us, which in turn will tell us how much we need to charge. Um, but I just wanted you guys to know, and I wanted the public to know that that's, it's basically a lock. We're just five, Final, finalizing the details. Yeah, the swimming lessons has always been a loss, no matter what, so. Yeah, um, we broke even this year, John. We broke even with our swim lessons, wow. so. That's surprising. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then last is this Pokemon and Pizza Night. I told you guys about this earlier. So I've been coordinating on this with, with, with Kate from the library. And basically we want to do, um, it's going to be start off as just a standalone event to see what kind of interest there is be November 10th. And basically we're going to invite all the kids out 
to the library. It's kids in first grade through sixth grade, and uh, it'll be $10 a kid, which will get them two slices of pizza, a drink, and a pack of Pokemon cards. And then they'll get to come out. Um, we're going to do uh, show the movie Detective Pikachu. And we're going to have, you know, uh, teaching the kids how to play, how to actually play the Pokemon game if they're interested. And then um, Shane, who is one of our part time workers, he's a big Pokemon guy. And he's going to a lot of these kids like to trade their Pokemon cards, but they don't know what they're doing. So they end up trading valuable cards for crummy cards or vice versa. So Shane is going to be there to supervise any trading that goes on to make sure that kids aren't giving up the farm. Um when they do that. And then just basically it'll be social time. And, and like I said, watch the movie, hang out. And, um, you know, I know speaking with Brian and a few other parents, actually, and a few other kids, it should be one of those things we fill completely. Cause I mean, I'd say 75% of kids are into Pokemon, um, these days. So basically, um, $10 a kid, pizza, drink, pack of Pokemon cards, November 10th and having fun. Sounds cool. They do this in uh in New Milford by in the Walmart Plaza every other Saturday for for kids of all ages and teach like them outside? how to play the. No, uh, at the game there's a there's a card uh, store. Like oh right yeah, 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 the game Walmart store. There. A few, yeah, a few shops down. Yeah, yeah. So they do this and they do it really, really well, and they do it for like varying ages every other Saturday. So the older kids go one Saturday and the younger kids go the next Saturday. And Beckett is really? Beckett has gone a couple times. Um, so it might be good just to, you know, see how they do things as well. But yeah, it, it's in. a well attended program and uh, kids of my son's age um uh, seem to love it and, and want to learn a little bit more about it. So I appreciate that that we're bringing a program like this to to Kent. It definitely uh it definitely will drive a little excitement that is uh that's outside sort of the the sports and athletics realm so appreciate yeah. it jared you hit the nail on the head with that it's good to branch out into those alternative activities you know mike you need to make an make a motion for that correct correct yeah yeah so um i'll make a motion uh jared can you give me the the dates again yeah november 10th Calling it Pokemon and Pizza Night. It'll be on November 10th, $10 a child. Uh, make a motion for Pokemon and Pizza Night, November 10th, for $10 a child. Second. Thanks, John. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay, awesome. Looks like that's unanimous. Okay, right, um, part. Park parks class, and facilities. Class item, parks and facilities. Yeah. Just want to let everybody know that uh we replaced all of the two by fours, two by sixes, whatever they were, um, on the two far backstops at um at uh this the fields at the school. So um the telephone poles are still in the ground. They've got a few years max left on them. Um, but all of the rotting two by fours that were going across them with nails sticking out and everything, those have all been ripped down and discarded and new pressure treated wood has been put up. So they look a lot better and they're not as dangerous. And uh, just note though, that those backstops have a very limited lifespan left. So once again, we're looking at a few years um, and fortunately those are not going to be nearly as expensive as the large backstop, which will be tens of thousands of dollars. Um, we should be able to build both of those for, you know, 13 grand or less um, total. So hopefully that's something, you know, in the next few years, we just make sure is in the budget, um, in the operating budget. So Jared, on, on field A, which is the one closest to the school and the baseball field. So we're going to do the, the, the backstop is going to stay the way it is until it, until we can get some more money for it. Well, we have money in the capital plan um, for backstops coming due. I don't know when I can't, I can't lie. It would take me longer to find my budget right now than it's worth, but we have money coming due in the capital plan in the next maybe three years. I think it's something like 40,000, which is for backstops, which I believe will be when we need to replace the, the large backstop has to be a capital projects because of, because of the sheer expense, those other backstops, we can work into our operating budget. But when that capital money comes due, we're just going to have to replace, um, we're going to have to replace that whole backstop. Um, and also talk about, as I've said to you guys before, 
protecting the playground um, because that was, it's so poorly situated. You shouldn't have a playground next to a baseball field in that manner. Um, yeah. so some extra backstop that backstop is going to have to be redesigned when it's built because it needs to protect at least a little bit of the playground. Um, so, and I think, like I said, I think that's in about three years. So just one other thing to the uh, shed there, uh, we haven't replaced that glass. Can we get somebody to do that or yeah, the windows there, some kids took it down. So I just have to pop it back in. Everything okay. in there is good though. There's, there's nice. a, enough of an overhang. No, no water's getting in there. I, I stuck my head in there and I couldn't find the, the window. So yeah, I had to put it on the floor. Okay. I didn't see it. So no yeah. problem. it's in there. I just, um, and then we got to get rid of that other shed too, but that, you know, that is, we get to that when we get to it. So it's, um, it's designed to be removable there or there just needs to be installed better. The window, the window. Yeah. I don't think it's designed to be removable. I think you had some, some in industrious kids who okay. uh, decided to, you know, use their, uh, use their KCS math, um, you know, physics, physics work there and, uh, pop that window out. But, um, I don't know, honestly, I haven't really looked at how it goes back in, but you know, if we need to get new windows on it, we get new windows or we just get a new shed cause it's too small anyway. So. Yeah. The best thing is for us is probably get a container instead would be cheaper. I think. They're just so ugly to be honest. The last thing you want is, yeah, but they make them, they make them really good. Uh, they don't look like containers anymore. So. Oh, okay. All right. But uh, the other thing too is the, the, uh, the Southern part of that uh, shed is uh, deteriorating really badly. So. The Put Southern part. Yeah. That's the one that's uh, facing the other ballparks further down. Okay. I'll have to look at that. I didn't see that. I mean, I know it, it needs to be repainted, but um, I didn't realize it was rotting. So I'll check that out. Okay, um, <clears throat> that was the last item on the agenda. Um, so I'll make a motion to end the meeting. So moved. Okay, second, favor, great. Um, thanks to everyone for coming out. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, this was a, this was a, uh, this is a lot tonight, um, but I, I do think the discussion was, um, was uh, you know, might not seem it, but I think it was, it was productive. Um, so I'll see everyone uh, at our next regular scheduled meeting, which is um, in September. So good night, everybody. Thanks everybody, good night. Thanks.